Hi, welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe how the LAC operon is used to regulate gene transcription. In the last couple of videos, we've been looking at the regulation of gene transcription. Now, when scientists first began to look at gene regulation, they discovered that related genes are often regulated together. In this video, we're going to explore one of these systems. This is called the LAC operon. And the LAC operon was the first gene regulatory system to be determined. I'm showing you here the bacteria E. coli. E. coli is found in the digestive system of mammals, including humans. Now, usually, E. coli carry out respiration using glucose. That's because glucose can enter glycolysis directly and so is relatively easy to metabolize. However, when glucose is not available, E. coli can use other molecules. A good example is lactose, which is found in milk. Now, to respire lactose, E. coli requires three proteins that are not required when glucose is respired. I'm showing you the genes for these three proteins here. Now, these genes are transcribed into one long molecule of messenger RNA. So the transcription of these genes is regulated together. Scientists say that these three genes are an example of an operon. So an operon is defined as a group of genes that are expressed at the same time and share the same regulatory system. Operons are very common in prokaryotes. However, operons are not commonly found in eukaryotes, which have much more complex gene regulation. OK, the gene LACZ encodes the enzyme beta-galactosidase, which splits lactose into glucose and galactose. LACY encodes lactose permease, which transports lactose into the cell. And finally, LACA encodes transacetylase, which is not well understood in the metabolism of lactose. Now, upstream of the LAC operon, we have the regulatory region. This regulates transcription of the LAC operon. Now, LACZ, LACY, and LACA are not involved in gene regulation. Genes which are not involved in gene regulation are referred to as structural genes. OK, so let's see how transcription of the LAC operon is regulated. Remember that the LAC operon is transcribed when E. coli is respiring lactose. Now, LAC-I is a regulatory gene, and LAC-I encodes a protein called the LAC repressor protein. LAC repressor protein is produced all of the time. In the absence of lactose, the LAC repressor protein binds to a region of DNA called the operator, and the operator is next to the structural genes. Now, when the LAC repressor protein is bound to the operator, the enzyme RNA polymerase cannot bind to the promoter region. And this means that RNA polymerase cannot transcribe the structural genes. So, in the absence of lactose, the structural genes are not transcribed. Scientists say that the operon is downregulated. OK, now imagine that lactose is present. Lactose binds to the LAC repressor protein. This causes the LAC repressor protein to change shape. Now the LAC repressor protein can no longer bind to the operator. RNA polymerase can now bind to the promoter and transcribe the structural genes. Now there is a problem here. Even when the RNA polymerase can bind to the promoter, the rate of transcription is low. However, E. coli contains another protein called cyclic AMP receptor protein, or CRP. When bound to cyclic AMP, CRP binds to RNA polymerase and increases the rate of transcription. Now, the genes encoded by the LAC operon are transcribed at a high level, and this means that lactose can be used in respiration. OK, now we said earlier that E. coli usually uses glucose in respiration. Unlike lactose, glucose does not require any processing to enter glycolysis. So what happens when E. coli is provided with both lactose and glucose? Well, in this case, the LAC operon is downregulated. When glucose is transported into the cell, the level of cyclic AMP falls. CRP is no longer bound to cyclic AMP. So now CRP does not activate transcription of the LAC operon. So in the presence of glucose, transcription of the LAC operon falls to a very low level. That means that if a cell is provided with both glucose and lactose, then respiration will mainly use glucose. OK, so hopefully now you can describe the LAC operon.